Hello, uh, good evening and welcome to the Santa Barbara County One Climate Virtual Workshop. We're really uh, happy to see you all this evening. We're gonna take uh, maybe another minute or two and allow for folks to join us and then we're gonna get started. We're still uh, having um, folks join us. So we're, we're gonna wait uh, maybe another minute while we uh, welcome folks in from the waiting room. All right, so we do have a, um, a full agenda tonight. So we're probably gonna, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I expect, uh, we do expect a few more folks to join us tonight. So yes, um, we're really excited that you're all here. I'm Tammy Seal, a consultant with Claceworks, a consultant to the County of Santa Barbara. And I'm gonna be your lead facilitator for this evening. Uh, we have uh, a, a few activities planned for you and uh, some great speakers from the county and an opportunity um, for us to talk with each other later in the workshop in small group breakout rooms. So as we, um, before we get started, um, we want to uh, first share a note for, um, for, our, for participation for our Spanish speaking um, members of the community. Ricky. Hola, muy buenas noches. Este, bienvenidos a este taller comunitario. Este, nada más quería dar una, informa, una, pasar una información de que va a haber se, interpretación en español simultánea. Si algunos de ustedes la ne, van a necesitar en su pantalla, pueden encontrar un icono de un globo mundial del lado derecho. Ahí pueden escoger su canal en español si prefieren escuchar esta presentación en su idioma de español. También yo voy a ser el facilitador del de grupo en español. Yo me llamo Ricky. Pueden mandarme preguntas si tienen en español también. Muchas gracias. Tammy, go ahead. Great. Thank you, Ricky. All right. We're um, really pleased to have uh, two members uh, from the Board of Supervisors available uh, to join us this evening. And I'd like to introduce Supervisor Joan Hartman and Supervisor Doss Williams. And Supervisor Hartman would like to share some remarks with us. Well, thank you, Tammy. And thank you everyone for taking part here tonight. The One Climate Initiative is a framework to integrate various climate related initiatives underway now in the county. It brings them together under one umbrella for greater coherence. Um, despite the difficulties with COVID and the new shutdown, there are really some silver linings. Last night, Das and I had the opportunity to participate in a Zoom a launch of our Central Coast Community Energy. You know, it took us a long time, many years and many studies to get there. And we, we were really worried that we would lose local control by joining up with another CCA. But it turns out that Supervisor Williams is a real leader in 
shaping policy along very progressive Santa Barbara lines. And so I think we're really well served and we have some great members there on the advisory council. But tonight's main focus is climate adaptation. We need to continue preparing to deal with the effects of a changing climate on all aspects of our built and natural environment and our lives. I'm pleased about the collaboration between the sustainability program and long range planning to deliver this climate change vulnerability assessment. And a special thanks to the Coastal Conservancy and to Tammy for, for bringing tonight together. I'm pleased also by all the participation tonight, all the people who are taking part, because it's gonna take collaboration, not just across government departments and agencies, but all sectors. And I really appreciate the focus on developing this assessment with an eye to transparency, equity, and inclusion. We all know that often it's the less advantaged populations who experience the brunt of the impacts. And so theirs is a critical voice to have at the get-go. And that's what this process has been about. Tonight, we're gonna to learn about what's been done to date and how to engage with the materials that have been created. And they're really exciting materials. So I, I urge you to pay attention, I'm going to, and also urge you to sign up for the updates with the One Climate Initiative on the county website. That way you're gonna be notified about all the other related work, the Climate Action Plan and the Active Transportation Plan and a whole bunch of different things that are underway. Uh, it's gonna uh, take a lot of work by all the advocates for each of these programs. You're what's gotten us to this point and you're what's gonna create the will to follow us through. So with that, I'd like to introduce my wonderful colleague, Das Williams. Well, it's an honor to speak uh, with you tonight. Uh, it's inspiring for me to see uh, the faces of the next generation of county and nonprofit leadership uh, represented when I looked around at you, uh, because you know I think it's the vision of Joan and I and the board that the county would be uh, where it's at uh, if and where we as a society, as a county, can move forward on climate initiatives. And I would say that these aren't just the area and the purview of um, what you'd expect, right? You know, it's not just the sustainability work, um, the, the sustainability program for the county. It's not just general services and their energy efficiency work. It's not just uh, the resiliency planning and long-term planning that have a role. Everyone in this institution has a role. We uh, can fight climate change through non-traditional avenues. Um, Joan uh, spoke of one, which is our uh, 3CE, uh, our joining of a community choice aggregator. Uh, we need to spread the word to the public uh, that this is an exciting thing to be a part of. Uh, they have already uh, allowed us to have a, a voting status now for over a year, uh, long before we are part of their load. Uh, and that's given us a chance to really help shape their policy and I've been real proud to participate in really a revolution. Um, you know, CCEs traditionally can be criticized uh, with good reason for uh, the purchase of uh, renew renewable energy credits and carbon-free attributes as opposed to long-term renewable contracts or the creation of energy um, uh, by the entity uh, it directly. But uh, the board, uh, policy board, has chosen essentially to dispense with symbolism, uh, to move away from uh, complying with the goals with uh, the purchase of carbon-free attributes and RECs, uh, and instead put all our resources in uh, you know, long-term mostly, but also short-term renewable energy contracts and our own um, uh, uh, building of local projects in order to meet our, um, uh, our carbon-free uh, mandates and our, the goals of the entities that are a part of, a part of it. And so that's enormously exciting uh, to see uh, the, the community choice aggregation community and in the environmental community uh, piercing through symbolism um, and embracing substance um, uh, and with that kind of thing, we're really uh, have momentum. 
I would also just be remiss if I didn't uh, point out a couple places that we could make a bigger impact on uh, climate change. Um, for better or for worse, uh, COVID, uh, an adequate COVID response includes convincing both ourselves as an entity and uh, local businesses to telecommute uh, in large percentages and to find ways to make sure that's accountable and productive at the same time. And um, given that we and the state of California's largest unlocked potential in GHG reduction is in vehicle miles traveled, uh, it, this is a place that I, I, I can't um, uh, overvalue. Um, so you don't normally think of even the county's public health staff um, having a role or in, if you're in DevRev uh, development review and you're processing uh, housing, I can't think of something than a large um, workforce housing development that could lock down um, our GHG emissions in the long run by promoting a reduction in VMT. Um, and I would also argue that, that Santa Barbarans are more ready for it politically. They're coming to the conclusion that the things they hate about growth is traffic and that we have more traffic because of lack of affordable housing production than we do because of it. Uh, so I just wanna encourage you all um, in your capacities, uh, whether it's at the county uh, or uh, in your nonprofit advocacy uh, to fight for every inch on every one of these, whether it's telecommuting, resiliency planning, uh, our energy mix, our energy efficiency work, or the big one uh, that we need to tackle in a way that like we never had before, which is workforce and affordable housing. So I'm inspired to participate with you, inspired to uh, be a part of this initiative and wanna hand it back. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Hartman and Supervisor Williams. Those are great remarks as to get us started. Uh, so we're going to, um, I have one quick ask of everybody right now. We have a short Zoom poll, um, one this allows you to interact with the Zoom software a little bit. So Sean is going to launch our poll. We have three questions uh, for you. Uh, if you cannot see all three of them, there's a slider bar on the right side of the, the poll box and you can scroll down and see our third question. Uh, We'd like to know how you, um, if you've participated in a county-sponsored meeting, whether it's a public hearing or a workshop in the past. If you, um, we'd also like to know how you heard about the workshop. And, um, and our third question asked if you would like any, um, us to provide an overview of Zoom, how to use Zoom tonight. So we're gonna take just a couple of minutes here for folks to uh, respond to the survey. It looks like you're all jumping on that. So thank you very much. And I think if you're able to take the poll that also shows us that um, your Zoom software is working pretty well for you. Okay, so it looks like um, right now, of the folks who've uh, responded, we're a little split on participation in previous meetings. Uh, though the, the majority of you who've responded, like more than half of you have not previously participated in a county sponsored um, meeting. And so we'd say welcome, welcome to your first workshop with the County of Santa Barbara. And we look forward to seeing you um, more in the future. And we hope you enjoy your time with us this evening. Um, it's also good to know how the word is getting out because we wanna make sure that as we move through the One Climate Initiative that we um, know what works to get uh, information about our projects out to your networks. So it does look like uh, we've had uh, most folks um, per weigh in and answer the poll. So I think we are going to end the poll and kind of move on. The one thing that I do see down in our last question is that we do have a request for a brief overview of how to use Zoom before we get started. So uh, we will go ahead and, and do that. Uh, so 
Let's go ahead. And, and it does just generally look like our newsletter and um, friends and colleagues have been important to getting the word out. So that's the one thing that we can see here. So uh, we'll talk more as we go along about how to stay involved in this project. So for those of you who maybe haven't um, used Zoom or are as familiar with it, I know um, when we started a year ago, uh, I don't think any of us could have predicted how many hours of our lives would be spent facing a computer and in particular, looking at the world through Zoom. Um, but here we are. So if um, your screen may look like this one, uh, the, the snapshot that's in front of you, and uh, this, will, this view right now is the view you would see if you are joining us from a computer. So an, a couple important buttons to keep in mind is the taskbar that's at the bottom of your screen. It allows you to mute and unmute yourself. So there's a little microphone down there. There's a video that allows you to click it and show um, your video, your, your image or not. Um, you can also important um, buzzards as you, buttons as you go through the middle of your screen. There's an opportunity to chat with us. So uh, if you click on that, you'll be able to see any information that we're sharing through the chat box. You're also, uh, we encourage you to send your questions to us through the chat box. And, um, and then in the top right of your screen is how you can change your view. You uh, will be sharing screens a lot tonight, so your screen will often have our PowerPoint slides on them. Um, but when uh, we're in a large group or not screen sharing, you'll have the option to see an individual speaker or uh, the, what's called the gallery. Um, it's often nice to do gallery, you get to see everybody's faces. And uh, those are the, and then this is, if you're using a tablet or a phone, your screen looks slightly different. And so you'll see, you'll, you'll find the same icons, the microphone and the video are the most important ones. And you'll also be able to navigate to chat in the event that you don't see that. I'd, if you're on a phone, I encourage you to, as often as the case is scroll to the right or scroll to the left to see um, where you might have more options. And I think, you know, those are the quick features. If you do have questions or any challenges tonight while uh, you're participating in the meeting, please do go to the chat. When you go to the chat, when you click on that chat button, uh, you will have the option um, to, to select in the to field who to send a question to. And at the very top of that list um, says Zoom questions, ask me, and that's gonna go to, uh, to Sean and he'll be able to help you navigate with if you have any challenges. Uh, if you have questions as you're listening to the presentation and they're about the project, please do send those to me. I am titled Project Questions, Ask Me. Um, you can also send questions to any of our hosts and they'll make sure that they um, come my way. And also we are going to um, turn on, we have not, done that yet, we do have captioning enabled for this meeting. It's so uh, you should be able to see in the um, kind of bottom middle of your screen, uh, the captioning for our remarks. If you're not able to do that, you might be able to click on the closed captioning button and perhaps enlarge that text if you'd like to see it. You also have the option to see the full transcript if that supports uh, your engagement in the meeting. So we're gonna, tonight, you know, coming up next is a presentation from county staff, uh, Garrett Wong and Whitney Wilkinson. They're gonna go over our One Climate um, Initiative and our Climate Change Vulnerability Assessment Project in particular. We will have opportunity for a short question and answer period after their presentation. So please do send those questions to us in chat. And, uh, we have a short visioning activity uh, that will uh, require us, if you'd like to participate, to open another tab on your browser and we'll share that link with you when the time is ready. And then using uh, Zoom's breakout room feature, we're going to have small group discussions. We have a, a short set of questions we'd like to ask you and um, be able to have some nice conversations tonight about climate change. And then we've reserved time uh, for all of us to gather in the large group format here, share the highlights of our discussion before we wrap up at 7.30.
So we do have a great team um, working to support the One Climate Initiative and in particular the workshop this evening. So while we won't be able to call out each person in particular, please do take a look at the screen and uh, acknowledge the contribution of everyone. Each small great breakout room this evening will have a dedicated facilitator and a note taker so that we can ensure we are uh, recording everything that you're sharing with us um, and able to carry that through as, we, as the county does its work on the One Climate Initiative. I, I do want to note that tonight's workshop is being recorded. Everything in this main session will be recorded. We um, are working to have an English recording and a Spanish recording of tonight's workshop, and both of these will be made available on the project web website in the next few weeks. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Garrett and Whitney for our presentation. Great, thank you so much, Tammy. Welcome everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your evenings to be with us here tonight. Uh, my name is Garrett Wong and I am the Climate Program Manager for the County of Santa Barbara. Welcome to our first One Climate Virtual Community Workshop. Before I begin, I'd like to be, uh, start us off with a land acknowledgement. The County of Santa Barbara was created on the unceded land of Chumash peoples. We want to acknowledge the Chumash community, their elders, both past and present, as well as future generations. We want to acknowledge that the state of California and the county were both founded on, upon exclusions and erasures of many indigenous peoples. This acknowledgement demonstrates a commitment to beginning the process of working to dismantle the ongoing legacies of settler colonialism like racial inequity. As been said before by uh, Supervisor Hart, um, we have, uh, Hartman, excuse me, um, we have, I'm pleased to announce the One Climate in Initiative, uh, which is a countywide effort to demonstrate our leadership on taking climate action, uh, raising awareness and increasing participation across a variety of county-led uh, planning and sustainability efforts. And we hope that this provides a platform for simplified and accessible messaging and outreach and engagement on a variety of different plans, projects, and programs. Next slide. This includes the climate change vulnerability assessment, which we'll hear about later, the 2030 climate action plan, which seeks to reduce our carbon emissions by 50%, and an active transportation plan, which will help make walking and biking safer in the county. Another effort not directly led by the county will also be the customer enrollment in Central Coast Community Energy. Next slide. These projects are not happening in spite of COVID and other events from this year, but rather in light of them. Ultimately, we need to be responsive to the community's needs and challenges in real time and ensure that our plans and projects and programs improve our collective community well-being. Each of these projects have their own teams, project needs and objectives and timelines but we hope to simplify and unify our messaging and community outreach activities through One Climate. Throughout next year, there will be lots of opportunities to help shape and influence the county's work across these efforts. One of the most significant activities happening next year is the customer enrollment in Central Coast Community Energy or 3CE. Um, this was already prefaced by our supervisors um, just now, but we'd like to provide a little bit of detail for customers who are going to be impacted by this transition. So back in 2019, the County Board of Supervisors, along with the cities of Santa Maria, Guadalupe, Solvang, Buellton, Goleta, and Carpinteria, all adopted ordinances and resolutions in order to join 3CE, uh, which is formerly known as Monterey Bay Community Power. 3CE is a community choice energy program which is formed and run by local governments to provide more options to electricity customers, increase the use of renewable energy, reduce carbon emissions, and reinvest ratepayer dollars into a local clean economy. In January, the electricity customers in the cities of Santa Maria, Guadalupe, Solvang, and the northern unincorporated county areas will automatically be enrolled as customers of 3CE. Customers in Carpinteria, Goleta, and the south coast of the unincorporated county will be enrolled in October of, the, of 2021. And in 2022, customers in Buellton will be enrolled. 
Customers won't experience any material change except that their next utility bill they received after enrollment will feature a new line item from 3CE. Customers have options. They can do nothing and automatically join as a customer of 3CE. They can opt up and to increase their use of renewable energy by selecting uh, one of 3CE's 100% uh, renewable energy uh, products, or they can opt out of the program entirely and continue to receive their energy supply from PG&E or SEE respectively. For more information, we invite you to visit 3CEnergy.org or countyofsb.org slash 3CE. Next slide. There are many ways to get involved and engaged with the One Climate Initiative and the county's different projects. Some activities are more involved than others. First, we recommend everyone sign up for our monthly One Climate newsletter, which provides resources, updates, and upcoming activities. You can help spread the word by promoting and sharing One Climate with your personal and professional networks, as many as you have done already to help bring people here tonight. Please find the county's um, the County of Santa Barbara's handles and accounts on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You can also visit our website at countyofsb.org slash one climate and participate in the online tools that we have, such as our climate ideas wall and a vulnerability assessment map. You can continue to participate in workshops such as these to, to learn, engage, and provide more input and feedback. And you can also participate in listening sessions and stakeholder meetings, which have not yet been scheduled, but will soon be um, in order to target different regions, sectors, and population groups. Additionally, you can also facilitate a presentation by the county. We welcome any invitation to present before your own organization, neighborhood, or other networks that you may be a part of. So please again, visit countyofsb.org slash one climate in order to learn more and feel free to contact us at any time. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Whitney Wilkinson from the Long Range Planning Division to present on the Climate Change Vulnerability Assessment. Whitney? Great, thank you, Garrett. And good evening, everybody. Again, my name is Whitney Wilkinson and I'm the Project Manager for the Climate Change Vulnerability Assessment and Safety Element Update. And tonight I'm gonna introduce you to some of the key concepts of the project and show you some of the work we've done so far and let you know about the opportunities to get involved and help shape that work. So why are we doing a climate change vulnerability assessment? Well, in part, it's required by state regulations. These regulations say that um, we need to update our land use policies and our safety element uh, to incorporate climate vulnerabilities and adaptation strategies that address those vulnerabilities. But we also know it's important for us to understand how climate change may harm our community and which elements such as groups of people and community assets are most vulnerable to climate change effects. What you see here are the four stages of the vulnerability assessment and adaptation planning process. Notice that outreach and engagement are incorporated throughout the project there in blue. We began the vulnerability assessment this past summer and plan to wrap up this stage of the project in summer of next year. We'll then take the vulnerabilities identified in the first phases of the project and begin developing adaptation strategies to address them in the later phases of the project beginning in 2021. We're now gonna take a closer look at the steps involved in the first two phases of the diagram that make up the vulnerability assessment. So these are the four main steps and questions we hope to answer over the course of the vulnerability assessment. And we'll go into each in more detail, but broadly, we're seeking to answer these questions. What climate effects will we see? Who will be most at risk? What resources will be most at risk? And as we assess these vulnerabilities, what are the largest and most immediate vulnerabilities we will need to address first? So our first step is to determine what climate change projections and hazards we should anticipate. In other words, what, what negative effects we're likely to see. And based on looking at the science, 
we know to expect warmer temperatures and more heat waves, about the same level of precipitation or rainfall, but in shorter duration, which can produce more flooding, less frequent rainfall and longer droughts, rising seas and eroding coastlines, more agricultural pests and disease, human health hazards carried by pest animals and insects, just like COVID-19, for instance, landslides and debris flows, and continued large and frequent wildfires. The next step is to determine who in our community is most at risk to these climate hazards and effects. We refer to these groups as frontline communities, defined as those that experience climate change impacts earlier and more severely than others because they may lack resources or there may be specific conditions that prevent them from easily adapting to climate change effects. Here are the groups we've identified thus far. They include children, high pollution burden communities, cost burden households, which are those that spend more than 30% of their income on housing, households in mobile homes, households in poverty or of low incomes, isolated and rural communities, low resource ethnic minorities, outdoor workers, overcrowded households, the unhoused or homeless, people living on single access roads, people with chronic health problems, with disabilities and mobility issues, people with limited English proficiency, people without a high school degree or without access to transportation or telecommunications, renters, senior citizens, the unemployed, undocumented, and LGBTQIA community. The next thing we need to understand is what community resources will be at risk to negative effects from climate change. Another term for resource is asset. We're defining assets broadly as a valued feature of the community. This includes infrastructure like roads, levees and dams, and transmission lines that support electric utilities, buildings, which can include homes, libraries, medical facilities, schools, to name a few. Assets also include key community services, which go beyond just physical infrastructure, um, but what services often come out of that physical infrastructure. These can include uh, communication, emergency medical response, energy delivery, public health and safety, and more. It also includes ecosystems and natural resources, which we value not only for their recreational value or scenic value, but also can, prov can provide important services such as groundwater storage or coastal flood attenuation. We'll also look at how climate change will affect our economic sectors, both in terms of disruptive disasters, but also longer term changes that may affect certain economic se sectors vitality. We hope that because the scope of our community's assets is broad and inclusive, we'll be able to consider a large range of potential climate related effects that can harm our community. Finally, we're bringing it all together and examine how these climate change hazards will harm our assets and frontline communities in order to understand our most critical and immediate vulnerabilities. One way this is done is through mapping. We'll map the locations of future hazards along with community assets and frontline communities. The overlap of these things will help us understand what and where we're vulnerable. We'll also develop narrative descriptions characterizing vulnerability more generally for assets and communities that are not easily mapped. As an example, children and wildfire smoke um, are, are not easily mapped because they're kind of ubiquitous throughout the entire county. Um, so in this case, we would just come up with a narrative description of that vulnerability. I'm now going to show you an example of what our vulnerability assessment mapping looks like. In this example, 
we'll take a look at coastal access and recreation resources as our asset. And we've zoomed in on one example, Goleta Beach County Park. I should also mention Goleta Beach can also be characterized as an important ecosystem and natural resource asset. Notice the locations of the sandy beach, the grassy park areas in green, and the Goleta Slough located just to the north of the park. This image shows you what is projected as a result of sea level rise in areas of permanent inundation as of the year 2050, based on modeling conducted by the US Geological Survey. Notice the increase in flooded areas along the beach and slough behind the parking lot. This image shows you the same area with sea level rise projections in year 2100. Notice nearly all of the beach is permanently flooded, in addition to much of the park and western parking lot. I'll also note this example does not account for storm surge and erosion and potentially other factors, which could exacerbate the loss of beach and park. This is a sad example of what we may lose but it helps us understand the severity and time frame at which we may experience this loss. And this is a critical first step in developing adaptation strategies in our next phase of the project to address the loss of this asset. And in this case, our County Parks Division is already busy looking at strategies to help this park adapt. Now I want to highlight a few of the ways you can learn more about our project and get involved. Please check out our project website to learn more. The URL is at the bottom of the slide, or you can navigate there from the One Climate Initiative website. There, once, once you're at our website, uh, you can find our map tool we've developed specifically to get your input on what community assets, frontline communities, and climate hazards we should, we should be thinking about that concern you. Please leave us a comment on the map and we'll make sure that your concerns are incorporated into our project. You can also sign up for project email notifications to learn more about future workshops and hearings and track the progress of a project. We'll also have another workshop planned for late January that will take a deeper dive into some of the vulnerability assessment analysis. And I hope you can join us for that. I also wanna emphasize the importance of engaging with a diverse array of stakeholders on this project. Since climate change can have many indirect effects that ripple through the community, our goal is to hear from all voices, especially those who will feel those effects first and worst. For this reason, there are many stakeholders we've engaged and will continue to reach out to on this project. This includes our core team of county and external advisors, community members like you, and a couple standing advisory bodies that will advise us on agriculture and equity issues. We also plan to reach out to stakeholder groups in the coming months and meet with those interested in providing input on the project. So pl please feel free to reach out to me if you're interested in setting up one of those meetings. That concludes our presentations on the One Climate Initiative and the Climate Change Vulnerability Assessment. And our team is happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Whitney and Garrett for the presentation. At this time, we do have a couple of minutes available for our project team to answer your questions. You can send those to us in the chat it looks like we've had uh, one question in the chat that Garrett was able to answer related to um, the Community Choice Energy Program. Uh, Garrett, is there anything you'd like to, to follow up with with the, the full group here? Sure, I'll just try and keep it brief. Um, so 3CE offers um, two um, two tiers of electricity rates for customers. The first one is known as 3C Choice, and that is um, that is a, a, a kind of their, their base product. And they, the concept is that they will provide that at cost parity to what uh, PP or cost parity or at a slight discount compared to what the current utilities are providing. Um, 
and they will increase the amount of renewable energy, um, hope to achieve 60% um, clean and 100%, um, I'm sorry, 60% clean and renewable uh, by 2025, and then 100% clean and renewable by 2030. Um, so there's no action to re receive that automatically. Um, and then there's 3C prime, which is 100% um, renewable energy generated from solar and wind sources in the state of California. And that does come at a cost premium at eight cents a kilowatt hour. So that is, um, that is the option for opting up. And that would be an option that would be good for um, customers, residential or commercial, um, who are really interested in um, helping to meet their, their own personal or professional sustainability goals. Thank you, Garrett. And we uh, have, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, yeah, so there's a correction here. So um, when I typed in my response, I did a 0 0.8, um, but I, it's actually it's eight cents a kilowatt hour. So it's 0 0.08 dollars. Okay. So excuse me on that, thank you. Sure, and just a, in the chat, there's also a link to uh, not only to the One Climate website, which we've, you know, we have here on the screen for you and the, uh, the vulnerability assessment website. There's also a link in the chat to the 3CE program website, which has a, a nice um, list of frequently asked questions. So if um, you have a question that we haven't been able to get to this evening, or you have one that comes out later, um, please uh, do take a moment to visit that website. So we are um, going to see no other questions at this time. Oh, the, there's a question about what does CCVA stand for? And thank you for asking. Uh, this is one of the challenges that I think many of us have is remembering to um, explain our abbreviations and our acronyms. So CCVA stands for uh, Climate Change Vulnerability Assessment. Um, sometimes you'll also hear us say VA for short or vulnerability assessment. So thanks for asking. And I always ask if there are any abbreviations that we're using and not um, clarifying for you. So we're um, to stay on schedule and allow you to have uh, opportunity to talk with each other in our breakout room. We are going to move forward uh, now with our next item which is a, a question that we have for you available uh, in what we call on minty.com. So if you have the opportunity to open a new browser uh, and to go to uh, minty.com, there's an, uh, when you get there, it'll ask you for a code, please enter 412236 and you'll see our question pop up. Um, you should also be able to use your phone and scan this QR code if you'd like to uh, take the survey on the phone. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here so that we can see the results as they come in. Um, so just give me one moment, um, but hopefully you all are able to uh, see the question there and uh, start sharing words, the question for you all is what words describe your vision of a climate resilient Santa Barbara County? So when you think about the county and envision the county in 10, 20, 50 years from now, uh, what words would describe how you think it would be different um, and to be resilient in the face of changing climate conditions in particular? All right, so we're starting to see some responses here. So I will um, share my screen so that we can see those together. Neela, if you have a moment and have the um, link handy to share with folks in the chat about how they can also uh, see the results. So um, as you're all, putting in your, your words, your descriptions and visualizing a resilient county, you'll see that those are automatically populating here on the screen. The larger the word, um, the more times that it's been used by all of you. And so what we're seeing is a shared vision for an equitable, collaborative 
resilient county in the future. And we're gonna leave this um, open. So if uh, you want more time to think about it when you're in your breakout rooms, do feel free to keep this, brow this uh, browser open on your computer and add more words. And we'll um, share the results from tonight's meeting and the workshop we had earlier today where we asked the same question. We're looking forward to sharing um, the results from both of these on the project website in the coming weeks. So equitable is clearly um, an important part of a resilient county for those of you who are participating, equitable, collaborative, uh, a county with affordable housing that's connected, green, inclusive, renewable, all shared parts of the vision. So, so thank you all for uh, joining us for that activity. And just to help us stay um, on schedule here, because to, uh, to us, we wanna make sure that um, you're all able to uh, talk with each other tonight. We're gonna transition to our small group breakout discussions. So we, um, in just a moment, you'll probably get a, a pop-up on your screen asking if you'd like to join a breakout room. So please do accept that. Um, we can go to the next slide. We're gonna have about 30 minutes in the breakout rooms together. Your groups are gonna be um, nice and intimate this evening so that you can go through our questions. You'll have a dedicated facilitator and note taker from our project team. We encourage you to unmute and also to turn on your video when you're in the groups so you can see each other. Uh, you will be able to chat when you're in that group. However, the chats in your group are gonna be limited uh, to those folks who are in your breakout room. If anything um, happens while you're in the room, or maybe perhaps you accidentally leave the meeting, please feel free to click on the Zoom link that you have to come back and join us. Um, if you need to change your breakout room or anything, you are welcome um, to click the button that's asked you to return to the main session or the main room. So um, after you all introduce yourselves to each other, we have four questions um, that we're posing to you to, to hear from you about your, um, your concerns about climate ha hazards, how you or your community um, or co friends or neighbors have been affected by climate change, and to talk more about areas um, that seem to be vulnerable as well as um, people and resources. So your groups are going to, we're, you, you've been kind of randomly assigned to a group and uh, we're going to, uh, Go into that group now and as soon as you get into your group your facilitator um, will introduce themselves so it'll be really clear to you who that is and the note taker who's assigned um, to record the conversation will share their screen and open a google doc will, where they'll, you'll be able to see um, the comments from your conversation as well so it should um, be pretty smooth and pretty obvious when you go into the breakout room but again, if you have any issues when you're in there, you, you do um, have the option to return to the main meeting. And we'll send you some notes while you're in there to help you keep track of time. So with that, uh, Sean, I think we are ready to go to our breakout room now. Great, just launched the rooms. And again, just return to the main room if you have any issues. This business resource. So we, we could create an emergency response portal to crowdsource resources, public sector, business sector, nonprofit sector, and individual. That's number one. Number two is uh, looking at a high level across the different water agencies. Each agency has its own uh, strengths and weaknesses and then kind of get rid of the silo effect that we believe exists today and utilize all the resources at a 10,000 foot level to support each other and scale, scale a more sustainable solution. Number three uh, is to track what's really gonna motivate us to take a positive behavior change. So we talked about transportation and what matters in transportation uh, is vehicle miles traveled per person per day and uh, gallons of gasoline consumed per person per day. 
We know there's solutions out there, whether it's promoting bike to work days, it's uh, electric vehicles, it's mass transit, it's more Zoom virtual meetings, it's creating a housing uh, that's closer, more dense housing. So we have the solutions, but if we know what the kind of top two pain points we want to solve for, we're going to be able to galvanize uh, more proactive action. Those are our three ideas. Thank you, Seth. Uh, yeah, there's a lot there. I'd like to go to group two now. I, um, is it Jordy? Did I get that right? Wow, good, good uh, pronunciation. Hi, I'm oh, Jordy. Thank Hard you. Hard to follow Maybe. Seth Streeter, but I'll try my best. <laughs> um, so uh, we talked about, I guess I'll pull out a couple important things. Um, time and time again, we discussed how important it's gonna be to support the low income communities and um, how they will be the most vul <clears throat> vulnerable in climate change. So, um, and that includes, you know, our working populations. We discussed how um, the fires and the floods really affected um, the working people of Santa Barbara and how we really need to get some affordable housing in Santa Barbara because we saw that everyone was living outside when um, the, uh, the floods happened. So we talked a lot about that. And then let's see, what else did we have? Um, that was most affected. Our biggest concerns um, were definitely um, resiliency and having um, energy that we can depend on. So um, we had an energy specialist in our group. We were very lucky. And he was discussing how important it is to have some local energy in case of any disasters um, and so that we can be a, a fully resilient community in case of any emergencies. Um, and then let's see what else. And then as far as our concerns, uh, that part got a little dark, but um, we have a lot of concerns in our community. We have sea level rise, um, drought, uh, biodiversity loss. And so focusing on those, I think will be very important to um, making Santa Barbara more sustainable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to group two and, and to Jordy for sharing those notes. Uh, it looks like Christy is up for group three. Hello, good evening. Um, what I think I'll do is maybe I'll highlight some themes that were similar. And if I can, I also will pull out some different elements. Um, so we also had a fantastic group. And when we were really thinking about, you know, impacts, uh, we were, there was a lot of talk around air quality and specifically as it relates to kind of our experience around wildfires, um, both locally, the wildfires that we've experienced, but also, also the air quality impacts from wildfires that happened across California this summer. And I think a lot of people were shocked that uh, while we weren't having fires directly in our neighborhood, we were impacted by that air quality. Uh, if you wanna to go to the next one, I think we also talked about in terms of some of the things to be concerned about, uh, similar to other groups was kind of the biodiversity loss, a reliable energy supply. Uh, there was talk about kind of the migration. And I think this also ties into kind of local housing and local transportation. Uh, the migration we talked about was a little bit more global, but I do think there's an element here we touched on in some of the other questions about making sure there's affordable and local transportation for so many of the community members that live outside our area and are commuting in, um, and then also working to provide affordable housing so that we can reduce those commutes into our community. And then if you go down to the next couple, I think some of the, if you actually go down to four or five and six, I think some interesting things that came out of this was really talking about the populations that are perhaps most vulnerable. And I think people were really touching on you know, really looking at the different communication channels that the county's using, making sure we're using kind of traditional communication channels that might be radio or TV, but also leveraging technology and new new ways such as text messaging and uh, social media, but also recognizing you need to do both or cover the full spectrum because some of the populations such as the elderly um, may not be using the technology that other groups are using. And then really making sure we also communicate in both um, English and, and then also non-English. So making sure we're getting communication to those communities that are non-English speakers and getting those messages in the right languages so they can be mobilized to take action. So I think those were some of the highlights we had from our team and I'll pass it back to you to go to the next group. Thanks everyone. Oh, thank you, Christy, and to, to group three. 
thoughts or all really thoughtful comments. And to wrap us up, uh, Garrett is going to summarize group four's highlights or present group four's highlights. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, we had a, a, a decent portion of our conversation actually centered on uh, the experience of flooding. Um, there are some parts of the city, city of Santa Barbara, Angolita, um, that don't drain very well. Uh, that get overwhelmed with um, either water that's coming in from the mountains and, or potentially water that's coming up from the ocean that doesn't uh, have any place to go. Um, so that leaves people, cars um, stranded. Um, there was um, similar discussion on the issue of communication and information, um, not being able to reach everybody. Um, people don't know, um, sometimes get incorrect information, don't get information at all, don't get information that's in their the language that they speak. Um, and, um, or sometimes don't know, know, don't know what to do with the information that they get. Um, meaning that they may be aware that there's something happening, there's an incident, but they don't know where to go for a shelter. Um, there are, are challenges for people who have disabilities, uh, for seniors as well. Um, that was also mentioned, um, but people who don't have, or people who are challenged in terms of uh, mobility or have basic access to transportation, um, access and functional needs, people um, are people, um, seniors and, and the homeless are all people who are vulnerable today um, and will continue to be more vulnerable as climate change impacts uh, become worse. Okay. Thank you, Garrett and group four. And I have to apologize. We do have one more group. Group four is not the last report back. We have group five, so my apologies. And we have uh, Julie, who's going to share highlights from group five. Hi, thank you, Tammy. So our group, um, really um, also noticed the smoke and was concerned about the, um, the kind of wildfire smoke conditions that have been um, impacting um, our communities and drought conditions as well. So I know that this is um, uh, some of the similar um, concepts that have been discussed by others. Um, a couple of other things I wanted to point out just to, not to go over some of the same topics, but um, I think that uh, our group noted that um, the people who will be most, the populations that will be most vulnerable to climate changes are most likely to be those that are of lower incomes. You know, as they pointed out, people with enough income may be able to um, adapt in many ways. Others will, will be able to just leave the county and, and go somewhere else um, if, if things are too difficult for them here, whereas other people, the, the low income typically are gonna have no place to go. Um, they were also concerned with um, populations that live very close to the ocean um, who would be affected by sea level rise and populations close to our wildlands where they're gonna be more um, susceptible to wildfire threats. And I think the last thing I wanted to point out is they were, um, our group boss talked about the economic impact and they were really looking at extreme heat, drought, um, wildfire, all of these kind of combine, these different hazards can combine and are concerned about the economic impacts um, that can happen um, particular to our agricultural sec sector um, as well as to our lower income populations who would not have the flexibility maybe to, as in one example was to be able to just um, get an air conditioner in their home to protect air quality and avoid extreme heat. So I think um, I will just leave it at that. Thanks. Thank you, Julie, um, to group five and, and to all of you for joining us tonight to um, in particular for the, to staying on and participating in our um, small group discussions. Uh, we know there are a lot of um, demands on your time and we really appreciate that you were able to share some of it with us this evening. We, um, we do ask that you um, share you know, what you heard tonight with your networks, with your, with your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues. 
Um, please help us to spread the word about the One Climate Initiative, about the Climate Change Vulnerability Assessment and Safety Element Project, the Climate Action Plan. Um, the county you know, has a lot of uh, very important um, projects ahead of it. We're, we are looking forward to engaging with you and others in your network um, throughout the next year. And so please um, do make sure you've booked part, bookmarked the One Climate website, that you've taken note of how to get in touch with Garrett and Whitney if you have questions. So on the screen, we have that website for you once again, as well as their email addresses. And um, we do anticipate that the One Climate site will be updated regularly. Uh, you will also, um, if you, in your event bright registration, if you opted in for one of the county's newsletters, you will be added to that list. Um, and so we do uh, look forward uh, to talking with you uh, again soon and um, seeing you at um, what will likely be a, a virtual workshop early next year and maybe hopefully we'll all get together in person sometime soon. Um, so thanks. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, be well and, and take care. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. Good night. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. And we're going to wrap it up. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.